unequal sharing. Let's start off simple. David scored 26 marks more than Andrew in a test. If their total score was 146, calculate each boy's score. We know that this topic is unequal sharing because one person has a greater amount or greater number of marks than the other. So we underline, well in this case I highlighted, but you will underline important words and details and you look at your steps for unequal sharing. You lay out the problem, subtract the difference, divide accordingly and put the difference where it has to go. So lay out the problem, step one. So they're talking about two boys, David and Andrew. So I have David and Andrew, and usually I would use an X to represent the unknown amount, but going forward, I'm gonna start using an empty box because you guys can use an empty box when you're laying out your problem. So I've laid out my problem. Next, we subtract the difference. The difference is the extra portion. Whatever is the extra portion is the difference. So David scored 26 marks more than Andrew. So 26 would be the extra portion, the extra number of marks. So 146 subtract 26 leaves us with 120. And it's important that we understand what each number represents. It's very important. So we know 146 is the whole that's the total number of marks, the whole, everything, total amount. 26, that's the extra portion that we are taking away. So you take away the extra portion and you are left with the amount that you have to share equally between David and Andrew. So it's important for you to understand what each number represents. That 120 marks has to be shared equally between David and Andrew because we took out the extra portion. So when we divide accordingly and we divide by two because the 120 marks has to be shared between two persons, David and Andrew. So we divide by two. So 120 divided by two leaves us with 60. Now, we understand that David has 26 marks more than Andrew. So David will have 60 marks plus an additional 26 marks. So while Andrew would remain with 60 marks because he didn't get anything extra, David does. So Andrew would remain with 60 marks. However, David will have 60 plus an additional 26 marks. Remember, we took away that, that extra portion in the beginning. So David will have 86 marks, while Andrew will have 60 marks. Now, here we see that 146 is made up by adding 86 and 60. That's important. It's important for us to check our answer. And we check our answer by calculating the sum of David and Andrew's marks. You see here we have the whole 146. So we are sure that our answer is correct. Mrs. Johnson is 27 years older than her son. Their total age is 59 years. Calculate Mrs. Johnson's age and that of her son. We know it's an equal sharing because one person has a greater amount than another person. So it's an unequal shared amount. So as always, we underline or highlight important words and details and we look at our process. We lay out the problem, subtract the difference, divide accordingly, and we put the difference where it has to go. So let's lay out our problem. We have Mrs. Johnson, an empty box, and her son with an empty box as well. So we subtract the difference. The difference is the extra portion. 
right? I keep repeating myself because it's important. You have to remember that the difference is the extra or the additional amount. So we subtract 27 because Mrs. Johnson is 27 years older than her son. So 27 represents the extra portion. Next, we must divide accordingly. So that 32 has to be shared equally between Mrs. Johnson and her son. So we divide 32 by 2. So 32 divided by 2 leaves us with 16. So you see here that Mrs. Johnson has 16 years there and so does her son, 16 years. So we divide it accordingly. What is next? We have to put the difference where it has to go. Now the difference, remember, is the extra portion. So who gets the extra portion? Well, Mrs. Johnson does because she is 27 years older than her son. So she will get the difference. She will get the extra portion. So we can see here that her son is 16 years old while Mrs. Johnson is 43. So we laid out the problem. We subtracted the difference, divided accordingly. We put the remainder where it has to go. So now we must check our answer. To check our answer, we can add 16 years and 43 years to get 59 years. 59 was the whole, the total number of years. So we checked our answer. We know that it's correct. So here are two problems for you to practice. Simple problems for you to practice. Now let's go on. Let's go on to a more challenging type of unequal sharing. So mommy is 28 years older than her son and she is four years younger than daddy. Their combined age is 84 years. Calculate the age of each person. So as usual, we underline important words and details. I have written them in bold, but you will underline. And we look at our process. So let's lay out the problem. In this instance, we have three persons. We have mom, dad, and the son. So that's three persons. So I put three empty boxes. Next, we must subtract the difference. Now, remember, the difference is the extra portion, the extra amount, the extra number of years. So in this problem, we see that mommy is 28 years older than her son. So that 28 will represent a difference, an extra amount, an extra number of years. But we read on and we see that she is also four years younger than daddy. So whereas in the previous problems, we just subtracted one number. In this case, we have to subtract more than one difference, more than one extra portion. Because mommy has a difference. Mommy has an extra portion, an extra number of years. And daddy would also be older than the son. Daddy also has an extra number of years. So we would have an extra 28 years for mommy. And we also have an additional number of years for daddy as well. Since mommy is four years younger than daddy, then that means daddy will have 32 years. He would be 32 years older than their child. So let me explain that again. Mommy is 28 years older than the child and daddy would be 32 years older than the child. How do I know he's 32 years older? Well, the problem stated that mommy is four years younger than him. So if mommy is 28 years older than their son, then daddy would be 32 years older than the son. And we can represent that information in our number sentence as well. Mummy would have a sum plus 28 years. Daddy would have a sum plus 32 years. So we see here 
To subtract the difference, we have to combine 28 and 32. So it's 84 subtract 28 plus 32. In the previous examples, we only needed to subtract one difference, one extra portion. In this case, we have two people who have an extra portion, an extra number of years. So we had to combine them at first and then subtract. That's the only difference. Next, we divide accordingly. So 24 and we divide by 3 because in this case we have three persons, mom, dad, and the son. So we divide 24 by 3 and we get 8. So you see in the boxes, they are no longer empty. I have 8, 8, 8. However, mommy has an extra 28 years and daddy has an additional 32 years. So the son would be 8 years old, daddy would be 40 years old, and mommy would be 36 years old. And of course, we have to check our answer. To check our answer, we add the ages from mom, dad, and the son, and we have to be sure that we get back the whole, the 84 years. And we see here, yes, we get it back. 36 plus 40 plus 8 gives us 84 years. So let's see what we have here. Kim bought six identical books and four identical pens. She spent a total of $650. Each book costs $25 more than a pen. Calculate the cost of one book. As always, underline important words and details. We know we have to lay out the problem first. So we know we're talking about books and pens. So I have book, pen, and two empty boxes there. Subtract the difference. Now, what is the difference? Let's see. Let's have a look. So we know that the problem stated that each book costs $25 more. Each book costs $25 more. So do we have to subtract $25? Should we say 650 take away 25? Is 25 the difference? Well, there's an important word in this problem. The word is each. They are telling us that each book costs $25 more. So the difference can't only be $25. Why? Because we have more than one book. We have six books. We have six books in all. So that would be 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, six times. So what will be our difference that we must subtract? Well, 25 multiplied by 6, 25, six times. So we don't have to subtract $25. We have to subtract $150, which is $25 six times. You must subtract the total amount, the extra portion. The extra portion is not just $25 because each, each means each one. Each book costs $25 more and you have six books. So the difference that you must subtract is $150. So we are left with $500. The next step is to divide accordingly. But what must we divide 500 by? Now a number of my students divided by 2. But is that correct? Do we have two items? No, we have six books and four pens. So how many items do we have in all? We have 10 items in all. So 500 divided by 10 gives us $50. So you would see that I've filled my empty boxes now. 
fifty dollars buy the book fifty dollars buy the pen so now we must put the difference where it has to go since the book costs twenty five dollars more the book will have $50 plus an additional $25. So one book would cost $75 and the pen $50. And of course, we can check our answer. So $75 for one book and we have six of them. So we multiply 75 by six to get $450. And the pen costs $50. And there are four of them. So that's $50 times four, giving us $200. And of course, the total amount is the whole $650. So we are certain that our answer is correct. So here I've left two of them, two similar problems for you to practice with.